Consolidated Board before we begin the section one thing each our own way ask for guidance and the decisions that will be made tonight on the Hattie County Plan. Thank you. Roll call. Mr. Easley. Ms. Deering. Yeah. Ms. Glass. Here. Mr. Craddock. Here. Mr. Merrick. Yeah. Mr. Gaiman. Here. Package, do you have any minutes? Are there any? I'm not the minutes. Is there any additional corrections to the agenda? Stop right here. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. Move the second. All in favor, raise your hand. Thank you. We also have the minutes of the meeting on day 12. Are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? Move to be approved as written. Move. So second. 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 Move to second. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Thank you. Old business. Old business. And new business. Um, so next month we will have a special use permit for um, another solar energy facility. Um, this one is Blue Ridge Solar. It's um, off of uh, 703 in Climax. Yeah. All right. The chairman report. So let's proceed to public hearing. We will use this clock. Everyone's microphone is on. I hope. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, pursuant to Article 5, Division 7 of the Pennsylvania County Zoning Ordinance, we, the Board of Zoning Appeals, have the power to hear and decide specific applications and appeals in support of said ordinance. And accomplishing this important task of charge with promoting the health, safety, and general welfare of the citizens of Pennsylvania County, we must ensure that all our decisions and recommendations be directed to these goals and that each be consistent with the environment, the comprehensive plan, and in the best interest of Pennsylvania County, its citizens, and its posterity. Anyone here to speak with the board other than the applicant regarding zoning cases will be limited to three minutes. Okay, so the public hearing in case S-20-005 is now open. The time is 704. Report. Case S-20-005, Timothy and Rhonda Thompson have petitioned for a special use permit on 1.03 acres located off Blue Ridge Drive in the Stanton River Election District to allow for placement of a single wide family mobile home to be used for their daughter's residence. Planning Commission recommended, recommended by unanimous vote with no opposition that the petitioner's request be granted. The staff summary is enclosed in the board packet and Mrs. Thompson is here to speak, here to represent the petition. Mr. Thompson? Mrs. Thompson. Ms. Thompson, okay. <laughs> Was that your dog barking at me? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> the door was ajar, and I was afraid that dog was going to kick the door open, and then I, oh, I'll, I, I'll have a heck of a time catching it. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that you were there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I might have been out. I don't know. My daughter was probably downstairs sleeping. She works uh, third shift, so yeah. I apologize. And I also apologize. My husband had to work tonight, so he couldn't be here. What would you like to say in support of your application? Well, my husband and I um, just like the opportunity for our daughter to start out her um, married life back behind us. We have a, a lot back there that's just open field, and um, she's planning to get married pretty soon, and they just kind of want to start out. And I think starting out right now, um, both of them are correctional officers at Green Rock and um, just 
early marriage and starting out, I think a single wide, I think is the way that they want to go here in the beginning of their married life. So I'd just like for you all just to consider that and um, hopefully allow them to place a home back there. Okay. Any questions for the applicant this time? Yeah, they would use the same driveway as you do? Or you um, we way? have a driveway that comes up to our carport and then we have a lower driveway that'll go, that goes all the way out to the land behind us. We have two driveways. Okay, we may have some questions before we're done. Okay. Uh, sign up sheet. Anybody sign up? Okay. No one signed up to speak. So we'll close the public hearing at 707. Okay. Treasure use, mobile homes, adverse effects. I didn't see any of that. I'm glad she pointed out where it's going because I was wondering where is this thing going to go <laughs> when I looked at it, but uh, it's back behind. So yeah. Yeah, I don't see a problem. Okay. All right, there are no adverse effects. So we must take into consideration that we're obligated to issue positive motion. Yes. Okay. Are there any other questions Okay, the positive motion would read, whereas Timothy and Rhonda Thompson have petitioned for his own appeals for a special use permit to allow for placement of a single wide mobile home for their daughter's residence, and whereas we find no substantial detriment to adjacent property, that the character of the zoning district will not be changed so by, and that such use will be in harmony with the purpose and intent of the ordinance, I move the special use permit be granted. So moved. Moved. Second. I second. I move the second. Discussion on motion. If not, all in favor, in favor signify by raising your hand. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, the public hearing case S 20 006 is number 20 Report, please. Case S-20-006, John Orbaugh has petitioned for a special use permit on 0.91 acres located on Lakeside Road in the Callens Gretna Election District to allow for placement of a single wide mobile home to be used for his personal residence. The Planning Commission recommended by unanimous vote with no opposition that the petitioner's request be granted. The staff summary is enclosed in the board packet. Mr. Orbaugh is here to represent the petition. Mr. Orbaugh, what would you like to say in support of your application? I'm just trying to retire down here at uh, Racy. Okay. Yeah. You ready to move? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully <Okay>. next year. <laughs> I hope you all got a chance to drive out there. Yeah. There's a camp of sitting down there, now, right? Yeah. yeah. But it's not connected. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. We may have some questions before we finish. Um, let's see. I don't think anybody did. Um, no one signed up. Is there anyone, anyone in the public that would like to address us before we close the public hearing? If not, we'll close the public hearing at 709. Um, adverse effects? No. It's really pretty up there, and it's really some nice, nice mobile homes and nice homes. So I, would, I know this is a 2020 model, but I would assume the code's going to say you have to have underpinning and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so, okay. but it's really, really nice. The inspections would take care of the underpinning. Yeah. All right. Any other discussion? No adverse effects. Positive motion. Okay. Whereas John Orval has petitioned the Board of Zoning Appeals for a special use permit to allow for placement of a single wide mobile home for his personal residence, and whereas we find no substantial detriment to adjacent property, that the character of the zoning district will not be changed at all, and that such use will be in harmony with the purpose and intent of the ordinance, I move the special use permit to be granted. I'll make that motion. Second. All right, move and second. Any further discussion? Not all in favor, signify 
Okay, the public hearing in case S-20-007 is Case S-20-007, Linda Holly has petitioned for a special use permit on 0.69 acres located on Tight Squeeze Road in the Chatham Blairs Election District for a beauty shop. The Planning Commission recommended by unanimous vote with no opposition that the petitioner's request be granted. The staff summary is enclosed in the board packet. Ms. Shelby Clark is here to represent the petition. Ms. Clark, is that right? Yes, sir. Like to say in support of your application? Um, well, I've been trying to gear down last several years anyway, so I only work like three days a week and I take one person at a time. Um, and with the whole COVID thing and us having to shut down, it just made me reassess where I am with my career and heading into my retirement. And the property that I'm do, trying to do this on is my mother's property. She bought it for her to retire on, and she got she got sick and can't take care of so much property herself. So I don't know if any of you've been there. I've been there in the past month trying to clean up and keep the grass cut and maintain my home and my mother's home at the same time. Um, this would allow me to walk across my driveway and work part time, and us move out of Danville and have a lower utility bill and just gear down a little bit um, I do try, I want to try to maintain the house at the the smaller dwelling is directly across the driveway um, we are directly across that side entrance to the food line um, I will have a parking space for one person at a time when I do work if this passes um, and I want to maintain it to look like, you know, a house. I don't want it to look like, you know, a business front. I'm not trying to do that. I just simply am trying to not have people in my home with all of this stuff going on and not be stuck in a position where I'm paying booth rental somewhere or a lease like I was before if we look at the potential of getting shut down again. <laughs> so that's kind of where I am, and this is why this all transpired. Okay. Any questions for that? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, no one has signed up. Is there anyone in the public that would like to address the board before we close the public hearing? If not, we'll close the hearing at 714. So, thanks, please. Continue to grow. Mm -hmm. She don't that. Like that. <coughs> Were there any adverse effects, effects that we need to take into consideration? No. Okay. That would suggest a positive motion. But if you want. All right, the positive motion would read, whereas Linda M. Holly has petitioned the Board of Zone for a special use permit for a beauty shop, and whereas we find no substantial detriment to adjacent property, that the character of the zoning district will not be changed thereby. That such use will be in harmony with the purpose and intent of the ordinance under the special use permit to grant. Your motion, so moved. Second. Yes. All right, then moved and seconded. Any discussion? If not, all in favor of the motion signal by operation of hand. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. <laughs> and my glasses don't work. I can't, I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The public hearing in case S-20-008 is now open. The town is 715. Report. Case S-20-008, Monroe Solar Partners, LLC, has petitioned for a special use permit on 62.12 acres located on Climax Road in the Callens Gretna Election District for utility scale solar energy facility. The Planning Commission recommended by unanimous vote with opposition that the petitioner's request be granted with amended conditions as follows. Number two, height, except for weather, <coughs> weather station pole not to exceed 30 feet, the collection yard and substation or otherwise as required by applicable building code the maximum height of the solar panels and other above ground equipment will be 15 feet the 
The staff summary and conditions are submit conditions submitted are enclosed in the board packet. The representatives from Monroe Solar Partners LLC are here to represent the petition. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Chris Gordon. Um, uh, thank you for, for having us tonight. Um, I'm, I'm a project developer for EDF Renewables Distributed Solutions. Um, I'm joined here tonight with, by my colleague Jeff Suttle, the Director of Project Development, as well as some members of our technical team from our environmental consulting firm. Um, I, I provided uh, a packet here tonight with, which includes some slides, uh, if you don't mind following along. Uh, uh, I'd, I'd like to, to give a, a brief presentation of, about the project. Um, also included in the packet are two letters of support from the landowner who was unable to be here tonight um, and, and one of the adjacent landowners as well. Um, well uh, EDF Renewables is developing the Monroe Solar Project um, in partnership with Mecklenburg Electric Cooperative and David Lipscomb, the Vice President of Member and Energy Services from Mecklenburg is here tonight and I'd, I'd like to have him up uh, and speak to the project as well. Um, if you flip to the second slide, um, this gives a, a, a kind of just a, a general project overview. Um, Monroe Solar Partners LLC is a wholly owned entity of EDF Renewables Distributed Solutions. We are the applicant of the project on behalf of the project of the property owner, Mr. Joseph Williams. Um, the location is going to be on a single parcel of land in the, the Callens Gretna district of the county. The anticipated footprint will be approximately 25 acres and not to exceed 35 acres maximum. Um, the capacity of the project is 2.2 megawatts and this is referred to as a distributed solar project because it is protect, uh, connecting to the distribution grid as opposed to the electrical transmission system. <coughs> On the next slide, uh, slide three, you'll see the, the uh, conceptual site plan. Uh, this gives an example of how the facility may be oriented throughout the property. And I just want to highlight that the, the project has been developed in accordance with the Pennsylvania County Solar Ordinance, as mentioned with the, the conditions uh, mentioned previously. Um, the blue vertical squares, uh, as, as shown, are, uh, represent the, the solar panels, the, the connected solar panels referred to as arrays. Um, the, the project will meet or exceed the required setbacks from the project property boundaries. Maximum height of the, the equipment will be 15 feet, uh, with the, the exception mentioned previously of the potentially a uh, weather station pole, small diameter weather station pole that will not exceed 30 feet. Um, you can see the proposed gravel access is off of Shell Horse Road, uh, which is a private, privately owned gravel driveway owned by our property owner. The interconnection point uh, is shown will be at the southeast corner of the of uh, the site plan, uh, along at the existing electric line on Climax Road. No additional substations are required for a project of this size. It will connect to the existing electrical distribution uh, infrastructure. The limited visual impacts of the project uh, will be mitigated by the low profile of the solar panels. The, the setbacks from the property and the existing vegetation are along the property boundary. Um, directly to the west of the project area, there is a approximately 100 foot wide stand of trees along the full extent of Climax Road, and that will uh, limit the potential views from the public right of way. We're also proposing um, supplemental vegetative plantings in the blue hatched areas as shown on the northern and eastern and southern corner of the property area project area and uh, those locations were selected based on the topography and the, the highest visual impact to the adjoining property owners that are not our, our landowner Mr. Williams or his immediate family. On the next slide um, I'd like to just briefly speak to the, uh, the due diligence and site investigations that have been conducted to date uh, EDF's environmental consulting firm ECT um, has uh, ex assessed uh, access publicly available data and resources and conducted field reconnaissance, a wetland delineation, and habitat assessment. Um, a 50-foot buffer will be provided ar ar around all 
identified on-site water features, uh, which are limited to three ponds that can be sh that are shown on the, the site plan. No threatened or endangered species were observed, and there's a low potential for on-site occurrence due to the current uh, and past history of the land as agricultural use. The project will obtain all necessary local and state federal permits as required, uh, including stormwater permits. Uh, stormwater runoff will be controlled in accordance with, with all local regulations, and we don't anticipate any natural drainage, uh, impacted natural drainage patterns uh, due to the fact that solar arrays uh, by nature can conform to the existing topography. They are constructed by um, uh, uh, by pounded post into the existing ground surface. The racking is then uh, attached to that. So there will be, uh, there will be no need for, um, so for large excavations or large foundations uh, for this project to be built. And there's uh, only a minimal addition of Im impervious surfaces, which would be um, small concrete pads below the ancillary equipment shown on the site plan, which includes inverters, transformers, and uh, optional battery storage equipment. On the next slide, uh, kind of just give you a, a general idea of the project timeline and the schedule. Uh, at the end of the last year, we, we began our, our initial siting and uh, due diligence uh, operations. We also uh, initiated our interconnection studies with the local electric co-op. Um, we'll be doing some additional engineering work and we've begun permitting process, which brings us here tonight. Uh, EDF Renewables is committed to the community engagement uh, and we reached out as best we could to adjacent property owners prior to the county's notification. Um, and that, uh, that was in the form of a mailer, which included uh, the a prof project profile sheet that's also included in your packets tonight, as well as an invitation to a live webinar, uh, which was in lieu of a, of a community meeting, which is how we would typically handle our community engagement. Uh, but given the, the large gathering restrictions, we. We uh, did the best we could with, with a, a, a webinar for, for uh, neighbors to log into. And that was, uh, that was attended by, by uh, about a half a dozen uh, local residents, as well as one planning commissioner. Um, later this year, we plan to uh, conduct our final design and engineering procurement of equipment. And then uh, our goal is to get the facility up uh, for commercial operations uh, by the beginning of 2021. For a project of this size, the, the construction activities can be condensed to a approximately six month time frame, and, and that includes site preparation, uh, structural work and racking, installation of modules, uh, installation of the additional equipment, uh, and then final testing and commissioning. At this time, I would like to, to uh, allow David Lipscomb from Mecklenburg Electric to, to say a few words regarding um, our partnership with them. Chris. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, remainder of the committee. I'd, I'd like to take just a couple of minutes to explain to you how Mecklenburg Electric Cooperative fits into this, into this uh, project. Uh, but, but first, let me go back and explain a little bit about who Mecklenburg Electric Cooperative is. We are a member-owned or customer-owned electric utility. We are a not-for-profit utility. We are headquartered in Chase City, Virginia. We have an office there. We have one in Emporia. We also have one in, in Gretna, which serves all of Pennsylvania County. Now, the cooperative serves 6,500 accounts in Pennsylvania County out of the total 25,000 uh, members that we serve, a total of 31,000 accounts. So a significant number of the people that we serve live in Pennsylvania County, and that represents that 6,500 accounts represents about 16,000 residents here in the county. So uh, we are appreciative to be a part of of the Pennsylvania community and the area. Now, one of the things that we do, there are 11 cooperatives, and Mecklenburg is one of those cooperatives, that work together from Virginia, Maryland, and Delaware. And one of the ways that we're able to keep our rates low is we work together to either purchase power or to build power plants or to become involved or, or partner with projects like the Monroe Projects to, to gain our, our power. So we do that through an organization called Old Dominion Electric Cooperative. Mm -hmm. And Old Dominion is headquartered in um, Glen Allen, Virginia. And it's part, like I said, there are 11 cooperatives that, 
that go together to make up that. Now, on that board, the board of Old Dominion Electric Cooperative, MEC has two members who are on that board, and of course their job is to make sure that our communities are represented in anything that goes on. So Old Dominion, on our behalf, they own a mix of, of different types of power. Uh, we have uh, coal-fired power plants that we use. We have natural gas-fired power plants. We own solar through, through ODEC. But we also, you know, as time has gone on, our, our board and our members have said, hey, we, we'd like some other op options. We want something a little different. We, we, we provided wind. We've provided through, through that organization, through ODEC, we've also provided solar panels and solar facilities. The members, our local members, members in Pennsylvania County and the nine portions of nine Virginia counties and five northern North Carolina counties says, hey, we'd like something else. We'd like solar as a part of the mix. Uh, folks, solar has become a viable option today. It's cost effective and, and it, it is a good deal. So our members have spoken, they've asked for more, so we have, have gone out and worked with ODEC to provide that solar facility. So ODEC, on our behalf, went out and, and found, they vetted companies to come in and help provide the solar facilities, and they went through a very stringent process and identified EDF as, as the, the team member that we could count on to provide and meet the needs and also represent our values. So we are excited that this project, as, as Chris had mentioned earlier, it utilizes the same distribution line, the power line that's already there. It'll, it will tie to that. It will actually go to the substation that's just down the road from the project. If you guys have ridden out there, it's almost just across the road, just down the street, uh, pretty much. So it, it's right there. It uses those facilities. It helps us to better utilize what's there. Those panels will provide power to approximately 400 homes. And that substation serves 1,800 and 75 homes. So 400 out of that, you say you've, you've got a good portion, a sixth of those folks uh, or somewhere in that neighborhood will be served by that facility. So tonight we thank you for, first of all, I thank you for allowing Mecklenburg to be a part of the community and we thank you for supporting this project as, as we answer the call of the membership and residents of the county. Thank, thank you, David. Um, uh, and, and just in, in addition to, to the cooperative member, uh, the, the benefits to the members uh, he, he previously mentioned, I would like to speak to just some general uh, benefits of solar energy projects. Um, I'd like to reiterate that this will provide a clean, renewable energy source without using water, creating emissions, or, produ or producing any waste products. And uh, like David said, this electricity will be um, connected to the local distribution system at the Climax uh, substation and that electricity will be used by the neighbors and residents of Pennsylvania County. Uh, by nature, the facilities have a low visual profile and quiet operations um, that make it a good neighbor to the community that it serves. Now, as a passive land use, the facility will place little to no demand on county services um, such as roads, water, sewer, emergency medical services or the county school system. After construction, the facility will be an unmanned facility and will have little to no effect on traffic conditions in the area. And O&M uh, uh, operations will consist of periodic visits only for maintenance, repairs, and mowing operations. Project construction uh, will utilize local labor as much as practical which yields valuable solar experience to the local workforce. Other economic benefits to the county during construction would be in the form of contracting opportunities, materials purchases, and equipment rentals. And last but not least, uh, this is a temporary use of land. Uh, the construction involves minimal grading or land disturbance, and because uh, it is uh, constructed using driven posts as opposed to extensive excavations or foundations, the, at the end of the project life, which is approximately 25 to 35 years, the equipment can be easily removed and the land can be returned to its previous use. 
Um, finally, on, on, on slide eight, uh, I, I just want to quickly speak to, to who EDF Renewables is. Uh, we are a, a market leading renewable energy developer uh, in North America. We've got over 35 years of experience in, uh, in the United States in wind, solar, and energy storage projects. And we are the, one of the largest owners and operators of renewable energy facilities in North America. So we are well equipped to uh, and have the expertise and resources to uh, develop and build a project of this size. That concludes my, my presentation. In your packets, uh, there are some additional pages uh, in the form of frequently asked questions that might help answer any, uh, any uh, general questions you may have. Um, thank you again for, for your consideration of our permit and our project. Um, at, at this time, uh, I, I'd like to, to ask the rest of the, rest of the team to, to join me up here if you do have any additional questions and, and whoever uh, is, is best suited to answer the question. Would be happy to to speak to you. Thank you very much. All right now, the, uh, these proposed special use permit conditions that's what's being proposed without any modification. So, staff in your packet, <coughs> um, there are conditions from staff. Um, so, staff is proposing um, our conditions with that one modification um, number two we're uh, proposing the modification that it'll say height except for weather station pole not to exceed 30 feet okay. but as far as the fencing it's still chaining fencing etc that is what staff is proposing yes all right and did you have you reviewed reviewed these yes sir all right and the, i mean the, here we say six foot chain link fence but over here, it references a seven-foot knotty fence. Uh, fixed knot. Uh, that was a discussion that we did have with the planning commission um, last Tuesday, and we that was our initial proposal was to use agricultural style fence. Um, the decision was made to to go with uh, the county requirements of chain link. Right. Um, when I look at this at the site plan, this. Uh, area that goes along the highway yes um, it, is that part of your property or will that be paying the domain under control of the land that is not part of our project parcel that is a separate parcel it is also owned by our product our property owner mr. Williams right and you know how far it is from the highway right away to the back of uh, to the edge of your project uh, the trees are approximately 100 feet. Uh, the side setback would be an additional 35. So um, I, I would say just in, in that general ballpark, approximately on between 100 and 140, 150 feet. I'll uh, come back to that in a second. The dwelling goes away in the house? No, sir. Uh, there's no, there are no structures within the, the project area. Um, the, the home that Mr. Williams lives on is, is Right there, there, right down there on the uh, along Climax Road, the uh, the building shown on the set on the site plan is a barn, but that also falls outside the project area. No, no structures will be will be impacted. Right, so that, the home will remain. Yeah. Absolutely. Right, here, here's my concern about that barrier. Um, if it's at least 120 feet, you're probably okay. Because what's going to happen? What I'm trying to avoid is a future problem for this board. When the landowner decides to sell building lots along the highway, right, and he has to come to us and ask for variance for setback, and, and because the property is not deep enough, but if the deed is 120 feet, then that's no problem. So, uh, it's your understanding that that's at least 100 feet from the highway right away over to the edge of your project. Mr. Mr. Yeah. Um. They're not, the property owner's not deeding the property to them. Right. 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 So that wouldn't, once these are, once these are gone away, is their con, they have a contract with the property owner, so he wouldn't be able to do anything with this property until their contract ended and the panels were gone. With any of the property, including this buffer down the highway? That would depend, our regulations require that they maintain a buffer. Um, so even if, 
I know, but the point is, somebody's going to come along in four or five years and say, I want to build a house there. And, and if there's not enough land for them to get the, the depth that they need for the setback, they're going to come to the BZA and ask for variance. That's my point. Um, but if it's 100 feet or more, then we're okay. That's not an issue. It, yes, yes, it is. Uh, that was only I was, Yeah, but those are pine trees, aren't they? I believe they are, yes. Uh, and they're going to go away in, uh, they're mature now, so another five years, or 10 years, they're going to be gone, either from the beetle or from harvesting. So at that time, you would replace that with whatever vegetated berry you've got around the other edges? I think that I, I'd have to defer to county staff to, to you know, if, if it's part of the permit requirements to maintain a buffer, if, if that buffer, if the existing buffer were to go away, then they would be required to replace it at that time. All right. Right. So, that's a good question. And there's, and there's a address somewhere, but I can see many pages. It's, uh, I think, uh, it's uh, uh, I don't know. I want to go back to you. It's but the properties are for you to maintain, so if it does go away, you can replace it. But even the other buffers are going to require over 25 years are going to require replacements and maintenance to maintain. I don't know if I have space to that. to the, the photographs at the back uh -huh. uh, with the yeah, representative um, equipment. Yes, that, that is um, representative of the size of the battery storage system for a 2.2 a, a, a megawatt project like this. Uh, relatively small footprint as compared to the, the overall project size. Uh, and, but in anticipation of some breakthrough in battery technology that will make it feasible, we, at this time, we're not considering battery storage for this project, uh, but you know, for transparency purposes, we wanted to permit it uh, in case that were an option at a later date. Well, we've had uh, concerns about battery storage previously because the local fire departments and how about fight the uh, battery fire. So what you're asking for right now is just permission to put that out of storage. Nothing more specific than that as far as the technology. That's correct. Um, I, I, I do believe it is the, the one of the last conditions. It is number six. Okay. You speak of the 15 foot height. Are, are the panels 15 feet tall? Yeah, do you want to? Yeah, yeah, I have to. Um, Jeff, so, uh, comments with, with Chris, good evening. Uh, the, the panels are typically actually, uh, uh, you know, five to six feet. So if they sit on a, on bracket, it's five to six feet. Uh, so, but they, they do, you know, there's a single axis tracker. Uh, so during the day, uh, you know, the front end would be you know, lower to the ground. Uh, and, the, and the top end would be up in the air, but um, the 15 foot equipment height is uh, probably more applicable to um, the, uh, the batteries, not the batteries or the equipment or, um, uh, or the transformers and um, so Typically, your height, max height, is you know, maybe less than that, 12 feet. They don't look that tall. <laughs> and the tractors, is it the electric the tractors? Or? It, correct. Yep. It, um, you know, it, it generates uh, its own power. That, you know, they, the racket has motors on it. 
and during the day it wouldn't, it wouldn't necessarily be perceptible, but during the day they would adjust to where the sun is in the sky. That's why the, um, the, the roads are all oriented north-south uh, because it's, it's tracking east-west during the day, and it resets at night. Okay, and there's, there's no adjustment for the other axis, spring and fall? Mm -hmm. Co correct. Now, these are single axis trackers. Uh, multiple axis, you know, having sort of a dual axis tracker, it, it's, um, it's introduced an additional mechanical kind of complexity. complexity into it, and it's just, you know, it's more expensive to build, it's more expensive to fix. Uh, this is the most cost effective. And all the inverters are located at one spot? Uh, so there are um, uh, two, uh, two so typical inverter styles that you would deploy on a project like this. Uh, uh, the current design is a central inverter uh, that sits on a, a concrete pad. It's, it's pictured there, uh, sits on a small concrete pad with a transformer. That's uh, what's referred to as a central inverter. Um, and, um, uh, the collector lines feed up into it from, from the different arrays. Uh, the alternative is you would have uh, what are called um, string inverters. They're actually now distributed amongst the field. Uh, they're much smaller, they're like the size of an electrical box. Uh, and instead of, uh, you know, they, they collect up, you know, so you basically have a circuit board that sits next to the transformer in the center of the, of the project uh, where otherwise the central. So uh, the central inverter, that's the maximum extent of a footprint. Uh, so that's why we... Uh, that's a long way for the DC current, the current drop is... You know, if the inverters were distributed, you could have AC and... But that's, that's, that's correct. That's, yes, that, that's correct. Um, but he, uh, so both versions are deployed and commercially viable. Uh, yeah. it, it really it sort of depends on the project. Uh, design. Right, any hard questions? Okay. Um, that's all right now. We may have some questions before we go. Thank you. No one has signed up. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the board before we close the public hearing? If not, we'll close the hearing at 744. Okay, what do you think? Adverse effects? The head of our company. Yeah, of course, high concentration of vegetative barriers. Those are included. Oh, the, the project schedule seems to really be compressed. Other applicants have told us, oh no, it's going to take two years to get all the permitting in place. It looks like you're doing it in one quarter. Uh, thanks. Uh, that's um, a good observation, uh, and that speaks to the fact that we're working with Mecklenburg Electric. Yes. Uh, this project is specifically sized, so this is a lot smaller than I think most of the other projects that you're seeing or considering. Um, we are sized specifically to, to the load in this area because our, our power is going directly to the, the neighbors. It's staying here in Pennsylvania County. Uh, larger projects that occupy hundreds or, or you know, thousand plus acres, um, but there's a lot more that goes into them. Uh, that process takes a lot longer. The interconnection studies take a lot longer. Uh, just the development, um, whether it's permitting or the studies, uh, it's, it's a much longer process. Um, we have the benefit of working at the behest of Mecklenburg Electric and Old Dominion Electric Cooperative. So uh, those you know, mention studies are going, you know, they're, they're hand this project is for them, they're handling the studies, uh, they move quickly. And um, uh, because of the small size of the project, okay. we move quickly as well. Yeah, I just, we got some that I know we permitted a year or two ago that still, they have a term of shovel full of dirt yet. Uh, they're trying to get, they're trying to, so they're trying to get a power purchase contract. We, we, have, a, we have that power contract. So, Ours is a 25-year contract that's already executed with Old Dominion Electric Cooperative, and, and that benefits 
directly to the Burke Electric Power Zone and then. So that's, that's, uh, that was basically arranged up front. Uh, most of the time, the, the larger projects, they got to develop and then they go try to find a buyer for the power. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Gentlemen, from a visual point of view, I don't, I don't think you'll ever see the patterns once they're, once they're installed and where the land lays. That's about the pine stands there for 20 years. Oh, 10, B, B, B. All right, any other questions? Or any other any adverse effects we need to consider? Yeah, it's covered in the.